G'day, my name's Damien. I'm known as Damned on the forums. And today we're going to do a basic tutorial on how to build a theme for Fantasy Grounds. It's not going to go into all the detail required to build out a full theme. There are hundreds and hundreds of elements in a full theme and it takes a lot of time, particularly on building the graphics to complete a full theme. So today we're going to work with the major frames and we're doing this based on a request from Redu. Uh, Redu uh, is another member of the Fantasy Grounds community and he sent me a bunch of images that he would like in a theme and asked for some help in putting it together. So I thought I'd do it as a tutorial for everybody. Now the theme images he sent me are uh, these ones here. They're pretty basic images. There are a couple of problems with the images in that uh, some of the images are very very large, some of the images don't tile properly, and some of the images have watermarks on them, they're not really intended for reuse. So I've replaced some of the images with images that have a clear attribution, a Creative Commons attribution or other license that allows me to use it without attribution, and use and reuse the files. So, and I've also had to adjust the images that didn't tile, I've jumped into GIMP and I've, using various methods, made these images tileable. So the very first thing that we do is create a new project folder under extensions. I've called this one Redo. And the only essential file in here is a file called extension.xml. I've also created a subfolder called graphics. And when we look in extension.xml, you can see I've included some information like the properties for the name, the author, the rule set. You could remove the rule set tag and it would work for any rule set. However, it may not work for any rule set because the frame definitions may be different. In this case, we're building it for 5e, which is what I'm pretty sure what Redo is looking for. And I've put the 5e tags in there. Now, the 5e tags need are case sensitive. 5 lowercase e doesn't work. I've got an announcement in there. The announcement includes a icon. So the graphics icons file, that's the only icon that refers to in there. But graphics frames is going to refer to all the frames that we're building in today's tutorial and then also the sidebar buttons are in graphics buttons. You can see here under graphics we've got frames, icons and sidebar folders and buttons, frames and icons XML definition files. I've copied the graphics frames file from the 5e rule set because that's the one we're working from and there's a whole bunch of definitions in here which are not going to be changed by our extension. So I've highlighted the first one, which we're not going to, and I'm just going to delete those. So I've gone through and I've deleted all the ones that we no longer need, and I've just collapsed the ones that we're keeping so that you can see a few of them on the page. So we can see the utility boxes, campaign lists, reference pages, calendar, uh, combat tracker box, and there's a few others that don't fit on that page. This is the new image that I've created to replace Redo's image, the one that had some watermarks, etc. on there. And it's a pretty simple image. The image here is 1596 pixels wide and 1098 tall. And I've got a section that's different on the right hand side, which is going to be used for our sidebar definition. The lighter section will scale or tile properly in every direction, up, down, left and right. And it scales from the left hand edge right up to the edge of the dark section. The graphics frames definition file, we're going to look at the desktop and shortcut definitions and we've got the desktop.jpg uh, starts at 00, 0 and it goes to 1296 and 1098 so it goes horizontally 1296 pixels and vertically 1098 pixels. So that includes that entire light section from this particular image. And you can see I've only included the single slice being the middle slice and I've done that because I've just got a single tileable section and I want it to tile and fill the whole frame. For the shortcuts, the shortcuts is the sidebar on the right hand side of the screen. We can see the left rectangle. The left rectangle is the edge of that. In some themes it's quite elaborate. In this theme it's a simple black line and it is the black line is 8 pixels wide, but the original definition for the left rectangle was 15 pixels wide, so I've kept that. I've then got the middle rectangle, which is the bulk 
of that darker section and the right rectangle which is the last 11 pixels of width of that section. So that will tile the section called middle and that will tile and repeat there but in most cases that 300 or 274 pixel wide section will have no need to tile. I've now launched a my Fantasy Grounds and created a new campaign using the 5e rule set and you can see my redo theme shows up. It'll only do that if the extension.xml and everything is in the right spots. So when it loads up we can see that <clears throat> our desktop image works we have the background and it's tiling pretty seamlessly and we've got our sidebar which is working and as an added bonus the chat window also changed to because the file name I've reduced source files was actually the same as the definition file so it picked that one up automatically this is the definition for the chat box So the next thing we're going to do is look at some of the utility frames that Fantasy Grounds uses. So I'm starting with the first one called Utility Box, and I've basically used Redu's sand image. I've set it up as a tileable image, and I'm pretty much keeping the offsets that were originally in here, and I'm just going to replace the file name that was in here, utilitybox.png, with sand.jpg. Now I can use JPGs because I'm not using any transparencies in them and JPG files are less weighty, they're less memory intensive. So I swap that out and when I uh, restart the Fantasy Ground session we can see that that works quite well. It's a, quite a simple frame but it, it works and it's quite neat. However, when I open up another window that uses the same frame definition we see that there's no real def delineation between those two frames and it loses its appeal it's quite messy really quickly so I go back and I grab my original image and I simply put a white edge all the way around it a two pixel wide wide white edge and that makes a huge difference on our images. Suddenly we can see the frames between them. They still look neat and clean and crisp um, but now you can see the edges between them and I think they actually pop a little bit with that white border. We might also just try and do it with the top two edges being white and the bottom two edges being darker and that gives it again that 3D effect and I think that works quite well as, as well. Some people might have preferred the white one but we're going to go with this particular version in this instance. We can see that the other utility boxes, um, I've been able just to swap them out so put them in there with sand.jpg as well and uh, instead of having lots and lots of different frames which requires you to find lots and lots of images that work together that have a, a similar look and feel and then get them graphically set up properly uh, it's quite okay in my opinion to uh, swap all of these out to use a similar image so utility box and utility box 2 and 3 and also the campaign list tables I've been able to swap all four of those out to use the same frame and there's a bit of an example of what they look like it, I don't think it loses too much by having them all use the same frame here next one we're going to look at is the reference manuals so we've got campaign list with tabs and reference page. The campaign list with tabs is the bigger source reference page, the one that's the whole book, and the individual pages are the reference page frame. So I've used again the same frame, the sand image with the white top edges and the dark bottom edges. I've also gone and created a variant of that image and I've called it dark sand and we're going to use that for the calendar, the combat tracker, and the party sheet. As you can see here, they work quite well. We might want to later on change the colors of some of those headings from white to darker color, uh, just to give them some more contrast, but we're not going to do that in this particular session. You can see there's the contrast with the standard sand color, so the options box is sand, and the other three are dark sand. 
we go through and change some other records we can see here the story box record sheet and image box we're going to set some of them up and sorry and character sheet so we set two of them up as sand and two of them up as another variant called white sand so white sand is obviously a bit lighter again we can see the character sheet in the back left and the story uh, in that sort of middle section the one with the image they're the standard sand colors oh sorry that's the image and then we've got an npc record a item record and a story record using the white sand image when i was looking at those i was thinking that the story image looked a lot better on the white sand so this is our reference manual which is using sand you can see when we change it to white sand uh, it's a little bit more readable again just a small tweak but that mottled background when you're actually trying to read text on top of it is a lot easier when we're just using the white sand variant the next one we're going to look at is these darker frames that start with character select but also PC selection, NPC selection, stories, tables, etc. So we change the character select frame and we have a look at that. And we've used a new variant here called not dark sand but black sand. So I've changed character select and also the other definition which is called reference list. And between those two, they will change all the different. Uh, main story entry so we can see this sample image we've got character selection tables images story notes but all of those parcels uh, feet backgrounds races all of those will use that same frame then we're going over to the sidebar now again I'm copying the graphics buttons file from the 5e rule set and we can see a whole bunch of stuff that we're not dealing with in this tutorial so I'm deleting those all the sections are the common under character sheet and quite a few other sections but we're getting the sidebar sections we're going to ignore the small images for the moment uh, Redo has given me a single image so I've used the same image for all of the icons so we can see here that the first entry that I've got on this page is button backgrounds and the second one is button backgrounds down so you can create a push button effect by having two different files in these definitions so you can have icon background and icon background down so in this case we've used you can see here I've used the icon background image for for both the up state and the down state but not only that I've done it for backgrounds classes feats etc because I've only been given the one image by redo and when we fire up our rule set we can see it there in effect so on the right hand side we can see all of our buttons and you can see that they all look like background, however they do open the correct windows, so Redo, when he receives these files, he will update them with unique images uh, for each of those different buttons. And this is the rule set with the theme in its current state with a bunch of different windows opened up on it, and you can see the sand, light sand or white sand, dark sand and black sand frames. and peeking out of the bottom corner we can also see the chat window and there's a couple of other frames that you don't see on this one and you can see the sidebar images and that's pretty much it so once you get your head around the frames that we've done in here you can start expanding that and looking at all the other different graphical elements on there you can start looking at the buttons on the character sheets the buttons on the combat tracker and the party sheet you can look at the hotkey buttons, you can look at all the different emote icons and you can start working your way through changing all of those. It's a big task and particularly in the editing or finding of new images and getting a cohesive looking image or set of images together to build a theme that looks good as a whole uh, is a lot of work. It can be very rewarding and uh, building your own theme and once you do it, if you provide and use images that are shareable or you have permission to share them we'd love to see you share those themes on the forums for other people to use and enjoy thank you for watching